I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and welcome to Ask Dave episode 90, in which I answer your questions about amateur radio. This is the summer of antennas, and the antenna reviewed today is the MFJ 9232QRP loop antenna covering 10 to 40 meters with a 25 watt power limit available wherever J MFJ products are sold. The retail price is a penny less than 60 US dollars. Now, this is a different type of antenna from those we've looked at recently. And I warn in advance that this is a compromise antenna in that it doesn't radiate or hear as well as a half-wave dipole on the same frequency. Nevertheless, there are use cases where this antenna might be just what you're looking for. This antenna is designed for portable or indoor operating, and the antenna can be strung up in an ad hoc loop, even indoors. It can operate on one or two ham bands at a time from 40 through 10 meters. If you want to change bands, you can change the length of the radiating wire, or you can select some lengths that are uh, shown to cover more than one band. The antenna comes in the usual yellow MFJ wire antenna bag. Let's look in the bag. We pull out a 60 foot or so hank of wire long enough to cut loops for several bands. The key feature is this little tuner box. You connect the antenna here and with this BNC connector, or as I'll do with a BNC to PL259 converter, the antenna loop ends come here. Also in the pack are a number of connectors that can be crimped or soldered to the wire to make connections easier. While they are intended for crimping, the supplied antenna wire is so much smaller than the connector that crimping is impractical. Or you can use your own wire up to 10 gauge with the provided connectors. There are eight connectors, enough for four loops. Let's take a closer look in the box. The cover comes off with four screws. Inside are two capacitors. The construction of the capacitors uses a plastic dielectric, which gives more capacitance than an air dielectric, but these capacitors can only handle a small amount of transmitted power, hence the designation of this antenna is QRP. Now, here's some things I really like. The antenna leads are soldered to connectors which go through the plastic faceplate to become the surface that the antenna leads are screwed down to. There's nothing in between that could come loose and threaten this connection, and that is a nice touch. There is a movement in the QRP world that all connectors are BNC. I don't know why this is so. My entire station uses PL259s plugged into SO239s. Fortunately, I have several adapters I can use. It would not be hard to replace the BNC connector with an SO239 connector if you were so inclined. Let's take a look at the manual, which you need to download from the MFJ site. I'd suggest printing it and keeping it for reference with your other station documentation. Page 5 begins a dire but entirely unquantified excursion on RF safety. On page 9, we find a discussion of where to put the antenna and warns that the wing nuts so close to the controls for the tuning capacitors are hot and can deliver a fairly nasty shock. Page 10 starts the actual instructions for system setup. It suggests using number 10 or larger wire, meaning heavier with a lower number, such as number 8, which will keep ohmic losses down. However, the wire supplied with the kit is 20 gauge, which is pretty thin. So you're faced with a choice here. 
You can, of course, change the loop material easily. I'm going to start with the wire supplied with the kit. Page 11 gives some handy dimensions that have been known to work. I'm going to make single band loops for 40 and 20 meters. Pages 12 and 13 give the actual tuning instructions, which boil down to twiddle the knobs until it works right. Note, however, that when the loop isn't tuned, it really isn't tuned. The SWR is close to infinity. So, it's best to tune with very low power, or if you have a QRP rig that has only one output power, adjust the antenna using an antenna analyzer before attaching the radio for final tuning. Note also that if you change operating frequency more than a few kilohertz, you will have to retune. Okay, let's make some antennas. I used my 100 foot long tape measure to cut the 40 meter element for 28 feet and the 20 meter element for 13 feet, leaving 15 feet of wire left over. The dimensions in the manual can use this 15 feet to cover both 15 and 10 meters or another combination of bands. Note that these lengths are not large. Referring to the diagram, 28 feet around a square means 7 feet on a side. That's a pretty small loop. For 20 meters, it's only 3 foot 3 inches on a side, a really small antenna. Let's see what happens. I'm going to solder the connectors rather than crimp them on, given the large disparity between the wire size and the connector crimp size. These connectors are made for number 12 or number 10 wire, and we're using the number 20 wire that came with the antenna. Let's look at the outdoor portable scenario first using the 20 meter loop, which is only 13 feet long. This is shorter than it sounds. I set up in the backyard under a tree with the loop in a sort of triangle configuration. I set my MFJ259B antenna analyzer for a frequency in the middle of the 20 meter phone band and then proceeded to tune the antenna to get a low SWR. I found the tuning incredibly touchy. I was able to get the SWR down below 2 to 1, but hand capacitance effects and the slight stiction in the controls made it very difficult to replicate. Both the tuning and matching controls really need some sort of reduction drive so they can be tuned more carefully. Next, I tried an indoor scenario. I chose our bedroom and 40 meters. The 40 meter loop is 28 feet long, again not terribly long. I found that the tuning on 40 meters is far less critical and was able to tune to well below 2 to 1 in the middle of the band. I removed the analyzer, then attached my BITX40 QRP rig. The band was pretty dead, but I was able to pick up some CW and some single sideband. The band, although devoid of signals, made all the sounds 40 meters normally makes. I noticed that as I went from the top of the band to the bottom, I had to adjust the tuning control to keep up with the frequency change, which is exactly as expected. I've seen a few other videos describing the MFJ9232, and they all seem to skip the tuning step. It certainly can be tuned, but doing it with those small knobs is hard. As a minimum, I suggest replacing the knobs with the bigger, biggest ones that you can get that will fit. The larger knob radius will make tuning much easier. Do I recommend this antenna? Not as a primary antenna, no. But it's a cool way to play with loops. As you become familiar with it, you may want to throw it in your backpack for a day trip, along with a suitable QRP transceiver. Or you can try making loops, say out of an old hula hoop, or by winding a circular form with heavy wire. As the manual says, it's a great way to experiment with loops. 
you may hit on something you really like. I will point out that these loops are generally made from much thicker wire. In fact, this MFJ1788 loop has a heavy aluminum tube as the primary conductor and tunes at a much more deliberate pace and will handle a full 100 watts. The 20 gauge wire that comes with the MFJ9232 loop will have lots of ohmic losses due to I squared R losses, which is a general problem with loops because of the high circulating currents. I would suggest you use your own much thicker wire if you can in your operating situation. Heavy wire works well out of doors, although harder to put up in an ad hoc loop on a moment's notice, and is probably more a hindrance than a help indoors. Thanks for watching. Please click like and please subscribe. I'm adding a new web page to my www.dcastler.com website that lists things such as the tip jar, a Patreon link, a link to the tech videos on DVD, and the amateur extra videos on the 64 gigabyte thumb drive. I'll also list there any special links on Amazon that allow you to buy something at normal price and then Amazon sends me a small portion. All of this helps me keep improving the Ham Radio Answers channel and continue to bring the Ask Dave series to you. The next improvement I have in line is to get a real signal generator, or as they're known today, arbitrary function generator. I can use this along with the oscilloscope that your support has already allowed me to get to show how radio things work. Until next time, please remember to use both feet when walking. I do need to modify the walking man graphic to show him with a handheld radio. Until we next meet, 73.